I just absolutely love this car. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Kenan from Cars and Vids and today we're talking about one of my all-time favorite M cars. This is the E46 generation BMW M3 and in today's video we're going to talk all about its facts and figures. First, we'll talk about this car's past and where it fits into BMW's M3 lineage. Then we'll get nerdy and talk about some of the technical details. And then we'll do the best thing you can with an M car and take it for a drive. Before I get going though, big news, as you might expect, this E46 M3 is currently for sale being auctioned live on, you guessed it, cars and bids. This is an extremely late production M3 as it's a 2006 model year and it comes with some very desirable equipment including a six-speed manual transmission, the Harman Kardon sound system, park distance control, and the factory navigation system which is kind of rare on one of these. It's also finished in this beautiful shade of carbon black metallic. And after you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below where you can head to the live auction of this one where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. And we begin the story of the E46 generation M3 by talking about its predecessors. And of course, we start with the famed E30. Originally built for homologation purposes in order to get the car sanctioned for racing, BMW introduced the E30 M3 as a lightweight, powerful version of the already successful 3 Series. And it was lauded in its time for its incredible handling prowess. And frankly, it's still lauded today for the exact same reason. However, in the United States, the E30 M3 wasn't that big of a success, but then again, neither were any of its other M contemporaries. The E24 M6, the famed Shark Nose, and the first generation E28 M5 weren't really big sales hits here in the United States, as they were expensive, and the M3 in particular was expensive for a four-cylinder powered car. And so with the next generation M3, BMW wanted to focus on making something that was cost-effective, but offered six-cylinder power and was a little bit less racy and a little bit more refined and usable on a day-to-day -day basis. And they gave us that, the E36 M3. And in the United States, it was a tremendous hit. Now I've already done a video on the E36 M3, so I'm not gonna dive into too much detail on that. But needless to say, it was a big success here in the US, despite it not having the same very powerful six cylinder that was found in its European contemporaries. And that was done for cost savings reasons to make sure that the E36 M3 remained affordable here in the United States. But with the E46 generation M3, BMW effectively wanted to offer one engine for the world, albeit with some emission changes. And that's exactly what we got here, the S54 inline six, which I'll go into more detail in just a little bit. As a result, the E46 generation M3 was a tremendous success. And over its lifetime, BMW would produce more than 85,000 units of the E46 M3. Unlike the E36 that preceded it though, the E46 was only offered in two variants. You could get it in the coupe variant, which is what we have here, and the full-fledged convertible, but they never offered a sedan version of this car. Regardless, it was a huge success then and it's loved today because of its naturally aspirated six-cylinder engine, availability of a manual transmission, and frankly, its spectacular looks. And now it's time to talk about one of the most distinguishing features of the E46, and that is its design. Now, for a lot of BMW enthusiasts, this was peak BMW, the early 2000s, as they were making other gorgeous cars like the E39 M5, which I happen to be a big fan of, the E38 7 Series, which is one of the most beautiful 7 Series ever, and the E53 X5. But in addition to all those cars, there was this, the E46 M3, and it had some very unique design features. BMW, of course, wanted to make sure that this car was more aerodynamic and it being the more powerful version of the M3, that it had some really cool changes. Beginning at the front, this car, of course, has a wider opening on its front bumper. And the idea with that is that you get more air into the radiator so that this engine can breathe a little bit better and stay cool. But the changes become more extreme the further back you go. When you get to the hood, you can see that it's got this beautiful power bulge in the hood, which gives it a very muscular look, but this wasn't pure cosmetics. This was actually functional. In order to accommodate the intake system for this car, BMW needed more space, and so they gave a power bulge to the hood in order to fit its induction system. Then as you move further back, you get to the fenders where you have these vents. Now in the prototype cars, these vents were actually functional, and they harken back to the E9 BMW CSL from the 1970s. But as time went on, BMW realized 
they didn't really need them to get excess heat out of the engine, but the board of BMW had already seen these vents and they really liked the way they looked. So although they're not functional, BMW decided to keep them for the E46 M3. Moving back further from there, you end up with these mirrors, which were unique compared to the relatively rectangular mirrors found on the standard 3 series. Much like the E39 M5, they were these more bullet shaped mirrors, and the idea was that they would cut through the air more cleanly than the square counterparts found on the normal 3 series. Moving to the rear of the E46 M3, and we see even more aerodynamic tweaks. One of the most notable would be this lip spoiler located on the trunk. The idea here is that you get a little bit more downforce generated as this car travels at higher speed. One of the other very easily distinguishable features from the standard 3 series would of course be the addition of quad tipped exhaust back here, which gives this car a really muscular, purposeful performance look over the standard 3 series. It also has this rear diffuser located between the exhaust to further accentuate that performance car look. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is one of the later M3s produced, which means it's a facelifted model. Now, BMW changed some visual aspects of this car just to refresh its look, and they're very easy once you know exactly what to look for. One of the most notable would be the LED globe style lights at the rear. They're called this because the LED pattern on the outsides kind of curves, making it look a little bit like a globe. Another thing they changed back here for the coupes would be the license plate light cover. They made this piece of trim much longer than it had been on the pre-facelift cars, and on the convertible models, they actually kept the shorter piece of trim. Not really sure why they did that, but it was one of the subtle changes that distinguish a pre-facelift car from a facelifted one like this M3. And now it's time to get under the hood of the E46 M3 and talk about the star of the show, and that is the S54 3.2 liter naturally aspirated six cylinder engine. While that's a mouthful to say, it's all really important as again, this is the heart of the E46 M3. For the US version, this engine produces 333 horsepower and 262 foot pounds of torque. Now the European engines, as I mentioned before, made slightly more power than this one, but we're only talking about 10 more horsepower and about seven more foot-pounds of torque just due to emissions regulations and the slight differences between the cars. But generally speaking, they got the same engine and it's a very special one at that. Now like the E36 M3, the block of this engine is cast iron, but the heads are made of aluminum and this car got some very special touches. For starters, it got individual throttle bodies, which you can see across the front of the engine. Now, ITBs are really important because they allow direct airflow into each cylinder, giving you more power, but also giving you more control over the throttle, which means that heel toe downshifting and things like that are really sweet in this car because they're extremely precise and again, they give you great control. Another big upgrade over the previous M3's engine would be dual Vanos. The previous generation, the E36, had single Vanos, BMW's variable valve timing system, on its intake cam only. But for the S54 engine, they added it to both cams. So you had variable valve timing on both the intake and exhaust cam, which allowed this engine to make even more power. But BMW wasn't done there. They also wanted to make sure that this engine could really rev, and so they gave it a forged crankshaft and forged connecting rods, and the result was, well, this engine could really rev. It can rev to over 8 thousand RPM, which is one of the reasons this engine is so beloved by enthusiasts today. The M3 after this, the E9X generation, got a V8, and the M3s after that got turbocharged power. And so, for naturally aspirated six-cylinder engines, this really was the end of the line. This was the high watermark for BMW. And that's like saying it's one of the ultimate flat six engines for Porsche or one of the V12s for Ferrari. BMW's core competency engine has always been its six cylinders. And if you're a fan of naturally aspirated six cylinder power, well, the S54 was the absolute peak. Now with all of that taken into consideration, this car is still pretty quick by the standards of today. It will do zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds, which might not sound that crazy considering you know Teslas can do zero to 60s in the two second range, but it's the way this car gets there, the thrill of revving this engine way high into the stratosphere and the experience of speed that makes it so special and beloved today. Moving inside the E46 M3, there's not a ton to talk about in here because well, it's relatively Spartan. Although this car has the optional navigation system that was available on these cars, and it has a series of buttons, everything is pretty clean in here. 
Um, and it's all very driver focused. The navigation screen is turned towards the driver. It really puts the driver as the center of attention inside the E46 M3. But one of the areas I do want to cover would be with its transmission. Now there are two transmissions that were available on this car. There's the six speed manual, which this car has, and there is also BMW's SMG, their sequential manual gearbox. Now that gearbox was first introduced on the European E36 M3, but it never made it over here to the United States. There was an automatic transmission available in the E36, but it was just that, a standard torque converter automatic. But for the E46 M3 generation, BMW introduced the SMG system in the United States, SMG2. Now that system was kind of rudimentary and it was in its early days. So it was known for being a little bit clunky. It effectively was a robotized manual, meaning that the clutch and shifter mechanism were operated by a robot and you would simply pull a paddle to shift the gears, but underneath it was still a manual transmission. And so today people have converted a lot of those cars to manual transmissions. And what's important to note about this is that the US spec M3 from the E36 generation only came with a five speed manual transmission. The European variant would get a six speed. But we never got a sixth gear on the E36 M3. But for the E46 M3, if you ordered a manual transmission car, you got a sixth gear. The one is one more variant of the M3 that I wanted to talk about briefly, and that was the CSL. Now this was the limited production lightweight version of the E46 M3, but it was never sold here in the United States. It was only sold in Europe. Now the most notable thing about the CSL is that it was an exercise in extreme lightweight as BMW would begin to use a lot of CFRP or carbon fiber reinforced polymers in its construction. The roof was carbon fiber, various body panels were carbon fiber, the door inserts are carbon fiber, and the famed intake that BMW would develop for that car was made of carbon fiber. But the US never got a limited edition E46 M3, but to me, that's okay because the standard E46 M3 is still an excellent car to drive. Okay, it's time to drive the E46 M3. Uh, now I'm, as evidenced by my shirt, a huge fan of these cars. My friend Luke at Massachusetts has one of them. Same spec actually, his is carbon black, also a manual coupe. Um, his has a lot of mods, but I've always just adore driving these cars. And at the heart of all of these cars, in addition to their incredible chassis dynamics, and they do handle just great and make it super easy, is the engine. Um, this engine is one of BMW's absolute finest. Uh, it is silky smooth and it revs like crazy. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> Woo! Man, it just keeps on revving. It revs so high. Oh, it's so good though. Woo! The other thing I think that's really enjoyable about this car is that like, you know, yes, 333 horsepower is not a ton of power by today's standards, but it's the way this engine delivers it that's special. You know, it's so accurate and it just, it just goes and goes, which is just so much fun. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it really goes. That's just delightful. And I think that's, that's what makes a great car these days. You know, really great handling a fantastic sounding engine uh, that's just so enjoyable to engage with. I think that's what makes the real difference with a, with a, a modern day classic. And, and that's really what the E46 M3 has become. You know, this car has just enough of the old school, but just enough modern balance that make it a car you could still drive every single day. But if you want to go out and have fun on a weekend, it, it delivers that experience as well. And it delivers it in a way that frankly, few cars do. There's a reason this car is so lauded and just worshipped by the BMW set like myself. It's just a fantastic car. So let's go over some of the individual attributes of this car. We'll start with the transmission. So as I mentioned, there are two transmissions available in this car. You could get the SMG sequential manual, or you could have a traditional six speed manual. And uh, this is the same transmission that's found in the E39 M5, the GetDrag 420G. It's a great transmission to use. I will say it doesn't like second gear when it's cold very much. That's kind of normal with 420Gs. Um, but it is like, it's nice to use. The throw is not, super long. Um, the shifter in this one, I'm not sure if it's factory or not. I know the shift knob isn't, um, but you know, it, it feels very nice to use. Everybody complains that BMW has rubbery feeling shifters. I, I don't necessarily feel that way 
I don't feel that they're like bad. I, th I think that they have really good engagement for a car that you're gonna drive every single day. And that's the design brief of the M3. It's a car you can drive to the track, beat around, drive it home, and then drive it to work you know, the next day. This uh, M3 has hydraulic steering steel, and it is, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a reminder, like, and what, like, good steering feels like. It communicates pretty well, um, and, but again, easy to use, um, and just very accurate. And the handling of this car is really great. I can't really push it. I'm on Mercer Island in Washington today. It's a little congested here, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of slow speed uh, areas to drive around so I'm not not really going all that fast nonetheless like I can place the car exactly where I want it and there is a little bit of body roll more than modern cars certainly but the benefit is that the ride quality is pretty good all things considered I think modern cars have kind of altered our perception of what of how of harsh ride quality they've taken it to a whole new level the uh, current generation 992 gt3 is a great example at slow speed the ride quality is punishing i think is is, is probably general but it's generous but you know it's a gt3 that's what you expect but then there's the star of the show and again that is the engine so we're going pretty slow here but i'm gonna wind it up in first gear Woo! <laughs> I was only doing like 40 miles an hour, but the rear end wanted to, to dance a little bit. But that's the fun of the E46 generation M3. It's just, it's usable, enjoyable, fun power. Um, and that's lost on so many cars today. So many cars make so much power, they're just completely unusable. But not this one. This one is so enjoyable and fun. And you just, that engine just wants to rev and rev and rev. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What a car. I just absolutely love this car. And that is the E46 generation BMW M3. This car was a sensation when it came out and it remains a sensation today thanks to its glorious naturally aspirated six cylinder, its wonderful six speed manual transmission, its great handling prowess, and of course, its amazing styling. And if you've been in the market for one of these, well, you can buy this one only on Cars and Bids. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.